I'm reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Jesus said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, for there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head, and he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So whenever you want to start, you just start. Our passage from St. Matthew's Gospel reminds us that Jesus had come to Jerusalem from, for the Passover festival. He had arrived in the city on what we know as Palm Sunday, and it was to be a week of highs and lows as far as feelings and events were concerned. Also, Jesus had predicted in conversation with his disciples that he would soon be handed over to be crucified. Today we focus on one particular event in which a woman anointed Jesus two days before the Passover festival. Jesus and his disciples had established a local base, as it were, in the home of Simon, a former leper, at Bethany, a village about two miles from Jerusalem. Our reading takes us to Simon's house when Jesus and his disciples were having a meal probably a relaxed gathering at the end of that day. Then, an extraordinary event occurred. A woman came to Jesus as he was reclining at the meal, and she poured some very expensive ointment on his head. A parallel passage in St Mark's Gospel estimates the value of this ointment at about a year's wages, which would have been a considerable sum. Our passage from Matthew's Gospel does not mention the woman's name. She may have been either Mary or Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, who lived at Bethany. But we cannot be certain, and she apparently uttered no words. But her action in this instance spoke louder than any words could possibly have done. This was an amazing outpouring of love and devotion. Whoever she was, however, she knew that Jesus had predicted that he would be crucified later that week. And in verse 12, Jesus comments that this was her way of preparing him for burial. The disciples, however, were indignant and considered her action to be a complete waste of money and that the perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor. But this earned a rebuke from Jesus, who told the disciples she had done a beautiful thing, and that giving the money to the poor, though good in itself, we might add, would not solve any of the world's problems. Then Jesus, the master and teacher of the disciples for the past three years, reminded them that they would not always be that they would not always have him with them uh, as he was about to be crucified and by implication the disciples had not understood the urgency of the situation and as we know one disciple Judas Iscariot planned to betray Jesus for personal financial gain and so it was Judas led the chief priest soldiers to Jesus and they arrested him so what can we take away from this incident? 
Well, the woman's devotion to Jesus is a shining example to all of us. The cost of the perfume was probably the best she could afford, and she had evidently decided that only the best would do for Jesus. He also foretold that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, this act of loving kindness will be told in memory of her, as we are now doing. What a commendation. So let us resolve this holy week and beyond to deepen our love and devotion to Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. <laughs>